in association with Jaguar Lighting, inspired by the sun, moon and stars. Hello and welcome, I'm Ramesh Ramachandran and you're watching We On at 8, where we bring you a sample of the stories making news around the world. This evening, we focus on the American machination in Syria. I'll have my guest, Dr. Waila Vaad, a Syrian journalist, join the discussion in a bit. But first, a look at the headlines at this hour. Pakistan slams India-US joint statement says those supporting Kashmiris cannot be equated with terrorists. Objects to the sale of military technology to India. The US claims Syria is preparing for another chemical attack but presents no proof. Is America trying to hit Assad's forces as Syrian forces close in on Raqqa? A police officer has dropped grenades from a helicopter on the Venezuelan Supreme Court. No injuries reported. President Nicolas Maduro condemns what he called an attack by terrorists attempting a coup. And North Korea threatens to impose death penalty on the South's former president Park Geun-hye over an alleged plot to assassinate its leader Kim Jong-un. Hello and welcome. Now, as Syrian ground forces close in on Raqqa, the de facto capital of Daesh or the so-called Islamic State, the U.S. and its allies have once again escalated matters by threatening Syria with consequences and warn President Bashar al-Assad and his benefactors, namely Russia and Iran, against a potential chemical attack. For its part, Russia has dismissed the U.S. warning as provocation. But what has come as a huge embarrassment for the U.S. is an explosive report by American investigative journalist Seymour Hirsch, who has questioned the U.S. claims that Syria indeed used chemical weapons earlier this year. American investigative journalist Seymour Hirsch has questioned the Trump government's claim that Syria carried out a chemical attack on its people in the month of April. In a signed article published by German news site Die Welt, Hirsch says Trump was warned by the U.S. intelligence community that it had found no evidence that the Syrians had used a chemical weapon, unquote. In more damning revelations, Hirsch writes, and again I quote, the available intelligence made clear that the Syrians had targeted a jihadist meeting site on April 4 using a Russian-supplied guided bomb equipped with conventional explosives. Details of the attack, including information on its so-called high-value targets, had been provided by the Russians days in advance to American and Allied military officials in Doha, whose mission is to coordinate all U.S. Allied Syrian and Russian Air Force operations in the region. Some American military and intelligence officials were especially distressed by the president's determination to ignore the evidence." Unquote. Hirsch goes on to share more startling information. He cites one American official as telling colleagues that, uh, quote, none of this makes any sense. We know that there was no chemical attack. The Russians are furious, claiming we have the real intel and know the truth, unquote. Hirsch's reportage is reminiscent of the 2003 Iraq war when the U.S. used fake documents to claim that Iraq possessed weapons of mass destruction and it was used in a, as an excuse to start the war. All right, earlier I spoke to a Syrian lawyer and research scholar Zainab Bas. Listen in. I have uh, Zain Abbas with me, a lawyer, a Syrian lawyer and uh, research scholar. Zain, I want to dive straight into this uh, story we are following closely on Vion. Uh, what do you make of the Seymour Hirsch article in Develt uh, news site? Does it nail America's lie? 
Well, basically, to be honestly speaking, today we always hear such accusations only during the time when the Syrian army is making uh, more achievements and victories against ISIS and terrorist groups and recapturing lands which were under the control of these terrorist groups. So I think there is nothing new today from hearing such false accusations. But the questions that can be brought up here today is, what happened to the results of the uh, last investigations that were made on the so-called chemical attack uh, in Khan al-Asal and al-Ghuta? And the second question that I would like to ask here today is, why have they rejected our proposal to send an investigation committee and investigate the area where they claim that the regime has used such chemical weapons? Indeed, and the Hirsch article goes on to uh, dwell a little bit on the white helmets and the uh, questionable nature of the activity. Now, we know that uh, there was a very uh, important video which went viral on the social media about a young boy called Umran Daknish who was uh, shown sitting in an ambulance with blood dripping from his face. And that video, it, uh, on, in, with the benefit of hindsight, uh, turns out to be a fake video, a part of the white helmets propaganda. Now, what do we know about the white helmets and their questionable activities in inside Syria? Well, if I would define today this organization, I would say it's an organization with a humanitarian uh, form, but with a terrorist content. And the main purpose of this organization, which was created and funded by the state of Qatar, is to present uh, false and uh, fabricated materials to condemn the regime on humanitarian background. But so many videos have been leaked and uh, it has been proven that uh, these groups are only present in the areas where, uh, that are under the control of ISIS or other terrorist groups. So I don't think that today anyone would believe that this group is just for a humanitarian cause in Syria. Indeed, and from all accounts, it seems to be a case of America using uh, the weapons of mass destruction or chemical weapons for that matter to use it as an excuse to bomb a country, in this case Syria. Do you think it is similar to the 2003 incident when America used fake documents and intelligence to uh, start the Iraq war, as it were, in 2003? You think this is a repeat of the same event? Well, uh, today we can't actually, or let's say no one can actually predict the future actions or policy of the United States, especially under the administration of Mr. Trump. But we don't trust their policy in the region. And I would like to say here that the scenario in Syria is completely different from the scenario of Iraq. First being that Syria has already uh, gave up their chemical weapons in the year 2013 under the supervision of the United Nations. And second, I think our army or the country has already proved itself as strong during the war against terrorism, and especially when we have strong allies such as Russia and Iran in the region. And, and Zain, uh, for the viewers who might not be familiar with the situation obtaining in Syria today or the history of the seven-year-old civil war, what would you say might be some of the U.S. motivations for its intervention in Syria? Well, uh, today I would really like to mention uh, a few of the motivations of uh, the United States in the region. The first be, uh, being is it aims to control and set up a military base in the borders between Syria and Iraq in order to block the cooperation line of Iran, Iraq, Syria and Lebanon. And second uh, aim is to set up a safe zone area in order to uh, fulfill the safety and security of the state of Israel and to keep control over the Golan Heights which is a territory known for uh, its uh, rich uh, resources. And we know that uh, the U.S. claimed that Syria had used uh, chemical attacks, chemical weapons on the 4th of April, and that was used as an excuse for the 7th April U.S. airstrikes on Syria. Now, we know that uh, the, the attacks have indeed happened, but what about the timing of the attacks? Why now when the Syrian forces are advancing or closing in on Raqqa, the de facto capital of the so-called Islamic State or Daesh, so what do you make of the timing of the U.S. intervention, as it were, on the 7th of April? Why now? Well, we can uh, say that uh, today it's very clear to us that the United States is not serious in the war against terrorism. And uh, we have here to point out that if ISIS is defeated, then what reason the United States has to stay in the region? So I don't think it's in the interest of the United States to defeat ISIS at the moment. It still has to secure its interest in the region, in Syria. And uh, the second thing is, uh, today, the Syrian army is uh, quite known in the world that it's fighting these uh, terrorist uh, groups and not only on behalf of Syrians as well as on behalf of the world. So that's why we are here to say that uh, the United States and its allies has failed and is still failing to defeat uh, terrorist groups on ground in Syria, not like what the Syrian army and uh, its allies are doing. 
And Zain, as a young Syrian lawyer and research scholar, uh, what do you make of, uh, would you say or sub subscribe to this view or school of thought that Syria is a victim of the American propaganda or the war machinery as it were? Well, of course, I can say yes to your question. Yes, Syria was a victim of this propaganda. And uh, the United States and its allies have used all of its resources and strength and power, including their allies in the region, such as Gulf countries, in, o in order to overthrow the regime. And they have proclaimed that this is a war for democracy. But no, in fact, it's a war between people who want to have a secular country and between people who want to take us back to the old ages. It's a war between our government and terrorism. And, and generally, uh, Zain, what do you make of the American policy towards Syria? on the one hand, and the region in particular. Now, we know that uh, the U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson had famously remarked a few months ago that uh, removal of President Assad is not a priority for the Trump administration. We also heard the American ambassador to the U.N., Nikki Haley, say that the people of Syria will decide for themselves the fate of Syria going forward. And immediately thereafter, we saw um, a flip-flop, as it were, by the Trump administration, and then we saw the attacks take place in Syria. So what do you make of the American position insofar as Syria on the one hand and the Middle East is on the other hand goes? Well, there's no clear position right now for the United States. They keep changing their positions day-to-day -day basis. Uh, but what I can make out is that they still are not serious in this war. They don't know how to uh, put an end, and they don't want to admit that the war in Syria is a war against terrorism. Today, the United States administration cannot come up to the public and say, yes, we did a mistake in the region. It's not really possible. But we hope that they realize the mistake and admit it. Indeed. and. Uh Zain, we also know the, the, that the ground forces are advancing, operations are taking place even as we speak. Can you share the current status of the Syrian armed forces operations near Raqqa? Well, see, this is basically the main reason why we see threats now made by the United States to Syria, because our army is achieving more victories. Uh, recently, 10 days back, we have reached the borders with Iraq, and last week we reached the border with Jordan. And that is a clear signal to the West that, yes, the Syrian army is going to win and the victory is coming really soon. The situation in Raqqa is a little bit complicated because till now there is no green light or signal from the United States. Our army is on the borders of Raqqa. Once we see, yes, there's a real cooperation between us and the United States, we will surely free Raqqa and end ISIS very soon. And, and Zain, uh, President Assad in his interview to Vion uh, recently said that, well, he's open for dialogue with anyone, including the U.S. and President Donald Trump, but he fears that the American deep state may not allow dialogue to happen or reconciliation to happen between Syria and the U.S. Your thoughts? Well, I completely agree with Mr. Assad, our president, on this point, because we have asked since the beginning of this crisis for open discussions and dialogue and to go for a peaceful solution, which India keeps on saying. And uh, that's what uh, Mr. Uh, Modi, the Prime Minister of India, has said earlier, that yes, there only could be a peaceful solution in the region. But we have not seen any uh, agreement or resolution between us and the United States on this matter. Indeed. And very briefly, Zain, uh, you're a lawyer, you've studied law. Now, question to you is, is the following. What business does the U.S. have to be in Syria today? We know the Russians are there at the invitation of the Syrian government, but what about the U.S.? Well, let me tell you today the difference. Russia came within the request of our government, the Syrian government, so that's totally legal. But the United States had to interfere directly without any request made by us in order to protect their tools on the ground. Today, the United States actually supports many armed groups in Syria in order to achieve their interest. And that's why they had to come directly in, in this war. They were not able to fulfill this interest using their tools in the region, so they had to directly interfere. All right, joining me on the discussion tonight is Dr. Wael Abad, a writer and political analyst who joins us via Skype. Good evening, Dr. Abad. Good to always have you uh, on our show. Uh, I want to begin by asking you, uh, and before that, I want to quote a line, a sentence from the article of Dr. Uh, Hirsch there. He says, and I quote, Trump issued the order despite having been warned by the U.S. intelligence community that it found no evidence that the Syrians had used a chemical weapon, unquote. Are you surprised? Well, I am not surprised because these days leaders who are become seasonal leader, become leading, uh, uh, become a top leader of a, 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 the superpower that now is only depending on his views of uh, the media reports. And we know all 
that the propaganda media has been smearing campaign against the Syrian government. And the president of a, of a country based his allegation against the use of chemical on those type of uh, propaganda uh, tools and, and items. It shows clearly that the, the preemptive strike was pre-planned and it was just a matter of giving the green signal because the Pentagon has showed opposition also to this kind of, of an attack on a Syria without even consulting the Russian on the ground who've been informed prior to the attack, which was just a kind of an eye wash for what the American wanted to prove and give a message that he is the president and he is can act whenever is needed. And that's why you could see that an unpopular president at home raises popularity at the blood of the Syrian people. There's another sentence or excerpt from the article which I want to share with you and the viewers who might just be tuning in. And the quote goes as follows. It is typical of human nature. You jump to the conclusion you want. Intelligence analysts do not argue with a president. They are not going to tell the president, if you interpret the data this way, I quit, unquote. Now, this is a senior advisor. The, uh, the author does not name the advisor, but it is revealing, isn't it, Dr. Waz? Absolutely, it is revealing. It's a fact that the president will be only a political decision and the military decision will be taken by the Pentagon at the time and that when they choose. He cannot even impose for them, but only he can give them the go-ahead with any kind of an operation where they can take advantage when to attack and where to attack. All of us knows, and I was, uh, uh, you know, you've been in Syria. We know that there are only two places in Syria left, uh, in Syria and Iraq, where the stockpiles of chemical weapons at the hand of IS. It is in near to Hasaka and Raqqa area in the province there, and also in Iraq and Mosul, where they know that these two stockpiles is there. According to even the, the, uh, the Organization of Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, the, the general director, he praised the Syrian government for being satisfactory, uh, removing its uh, stockpile, signing, adhering to the chemical weapon, and it has been removed with the American U.S. neutral ships, and that is what was the news, uh, just been, I mean, a watchdog agency said on Monday. So if all these indications showing that there is no question of a chemical weapon at the hand of a government who is winning traditionally the war on terrorism, why should they go for unconditional matter to invite, uh, I mean, the anger and the, 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 uh, the, apply, the, the attack from another country retaliation? So therefore, you cannot keep on a preemptive kind of a strike. Actually, if you look what Mr. Trump has done, he's trying to preemptive what Simon Hirsch was saying on uh, this uh, report, and just the next day when this report has been taken by all the media, the United States and its administration there accusing the Syrian government of preparing a, a chemical weapon. So what kind of intelligence input a president who is relaying on a propaganda machines of the media in different parts of the world that he is basing his allegation? So I don't see this as a kind. It is just a matter of the American. They wanted to make a military bases in Syria. They wanted to shift their military bases from in Syria and Turkey and bring it into Syria because the future of the American plot in Syria is to disintegrate Syria. And we all know that they have discovered gas, they have discovered oil, where Daesh was present. It is there, the gas of the Syrian, and it is on the Mediterranean Sea. They don't want to leave this cake for the Syrian people. We have suffered for seven years. I think it's a time that the Syrian people has to have a saying in their ending this plight for them. The world has to come together and prevent any kind of an, a war because making different battle zone all over the world and you do not want the Syrian or the Russian and the Iranian to win. It's an exactly, uh, it's a clear indication that you have no intention of stopping the war, neither in Syria, nor in Yemen, nor in Iraq, nor anywhere. It's just a matter of shifting this project from one area to another area because that is the project of having most of the places where you wanted a battlefield where you can sell arm and when you can also go for a managing of the crisis not finding a solution right dr awaz you mentioned the opcw or the organization for prohibition of chemical weapons now isn't it also revealing that since 4th of april this year when the alleged chemical attack took place none of the international observers have taken care or the effort to investigate on the ground. Isn't it revealing, yes. Dr. Awad? And this in spite of the amazing. fact that Syria has continuously and consistently invited them to come visit, inspect the site. Absolutely right. You have said it rightly. Because even when we asked the UN 
uh, special agency to come to Syria to investigate the Idlib attack in Khan Shikun. They came to attack, and then there was a sudden attack in Damascus uh, rural area, then urban area. They said, now we investigate this. Why didn't we, the, if the Syrian government is inviting the international agency to come and investigate this kind of attack? And secondly, the whole sources of the information is from Idlib, from Khan Shikun, was based on the uh, on Daesh, uh, Al Qaeda, which is run by Al Nusra. It is it is controlled by Al Nusra. And who is it? The White Helmet, which is the MI6 uh, uh, baby, which have they have spent two hundred million dollars on it to create it, and they are giving all the false flag. You said it in your beginning. I was listening to you in, in this report, and I have no. I've seen that we have reported this a. Timelessly, timelessly many times that we have shown to the world that this is a fake news. No, it is insane for any president of a country who enjoy the popularity of the people survived seven years of onslaught. He is able to face all this uh, criticism and kill his own people. I mean, come on, he's a doctor. He understands the, 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 uh, the human being life and he's for helping the people in, in Syria. I don't see any reason why to have demonized a president loved by his people survived seven years of unstaught despite all the efforts from 100 countries that to, to, to bring him down a regime change policy followed by the U.S. in Salai, he was successfully standing on his own feet. So I think it's a matter, it's not that chemical weapon, the lies was false, alarm was in Iraq the same. It is just a matter of a regime change policy, which they are still sticking to it. I know, Dr. Awad, that you referred to some possible motivations for the U.S. to be doing what it is in Syria. But besides that, do you think uh, there could be a domestic component to all of it in that uh, President Trump wanted to come across as being more decisive than, say, his predecessor Obama? Absolutely not. Look, anybody who called for a military action, he has to understand the consequences of it. You may call for a war, you may not be able to stop this war. So the Pentagon understands that any kind of a war or a provocation they tried over Syria, they know they are provoking the Russia. And don't forget now the Americans having their own military bases illegally in Syria. They have military, they have Marines, and they cannot subject to the American life. I don't know if Trump wanted to sacrifice the life of the Marines in Syria by getting, God forbid, in a kind of a suicidal bomb on them. And then he said, now we are at war with Syria. That's a wrong thing. We should stop this menace. We should not allow this type of war to go on and allow this kind of a lie really to dominate our, our domain in the media and go for it all the time. I don't know why lying in certain countries become a kind of a policy. Lie and lie and keep on lying till you believe yourself you're telling the truth. Dr. Awad, I want you to now focus a bit on President Assad himself. Now, we've seen a slew of videos of late showing him walking on the streets of Damascus without a security detail at hand. We also saw a video of him enter a family's home and interact with uh, the members of that family. We also saw uh, you know, similar videos of him offering prayers on the occasion of Eid. Now, is President Assad on a PR overdrive here? What is he trying to tell the world? No, you see, uh, he, he has been the man, the people man, actually speaking, even when he was a good relation with Erdogan or the Amir of Qatar, you can go to the old videos and you see him walking in Aleppo, sitting in the theater, watching, the, watching criticism of the government by some of the actors on the stage, and he never stopped them, and he said, continue, don't believe that I'm sitting around. He's eating sandwich in a dhaba in the street with Erdogan. He's walking into uh, the houses. He came to India. He, he went to all over the world. The man has nothing to fear. Actually, if he has to fear, he would have piled his money like many of the leaders all over the world who have dictators who carried their money and put it in American and, and European bank and run away. The man does not have his asset is his own people. He's been loved by his people. He's been moving around freely. You may call it a PR. You may call it love of the people. You know, when you go into a house of the people and he sit down with them and having their tea or somebody stopping a checkpoint and giving him a Pepsi or Coca-Cola or a Syrian drink, it's, it's not that an act, an act of PR is showing that he can reach to his own people, he can reach to the grassroots, and he's still loved. I don't know why he has to be dominated. Domi I mean, they are making him as a devil, when really the CNN and the international media that time, 2010, elected him and selected him and his wife, right. the best couple in the world. Dr. Awad, and very quickly in conclusion, uh, the UN calls it the biggest humanitarian crisis of our time. Who do you hold guilty for it? 
I hold guilty everybody guilty in this war. Everybody is responsible for the mess. We have lost more of our half of the population internally and externally displaced. We lost more than half a million of people. Everybody has the responsibility. And I think it's a collective measure for the international community to make sure that this war comes to an end. I think the Syrian people deserve to live in peace. Otherwise, the fight will continue between a secularism and fundamentalism. And we will keep on fighting till we ensure that terrorism is over from our territory. I think the United States has to understand that they have failed in bringing Syria down to its knee. They have failed in removing the regime by force. Let the people decide the future of Syria. Let the ballot decide who should lead the Syrian people. Dr. Wailawaz, thank you so much for your time and sharing your thoughts with me on that issue. All right, with that, it's a wrap on this bulletin. But news continues here on Vyond. You can catch all the latest updates on our social media, mobile and digital platforms. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.